It is May the 4th, and Disney Plus has dropped the series finale of The Clone Wars, and I'm going to do a review of Season 7. Now, if you're interested in my other Star Wars reviews I've been doing over the past few weeks, currently from uh, Episode 1 through 6, going into the sequel trilogy next week, oh boy, uh, feel free and check out my channel for those reviews. And uh, if you also would like me to eventually do a series review of The Clone Wars as a whole, feel free and let me know below in the comment section. So one of the first things that Disney did that rubbed Star Wars fans in the wrong way after acquiring Lucas films from George Lucas was to cancel The Clone Wars. And it's unfortunate that that occurred, but the good news is uh, the fans spoke up over the past few years. Eventually, Disney relented and allowed Dave Filoni and his team to give us one final season of The Clone Wars. So The Clone Wars was saved for one final season, which was 12 episodes, three arcs. You had uh, The Bad Batch. You had an Ahsoka arc that bridged uh, the gap in between the ending of of uh, season five, as well as leading into the uh, Mandalorian arc. And uh, all 12 episodes were great. Uh, overall, as a season, it was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. A fitting conclusion to the uh, Clone Wars series. And it's a show that started off a little iffy. The TV series uh, got better over the years and seasons, as well as the uh, CGI, the graphics. But... Uh, it had a lot of heart to it. it had a lot of love uh, behind the uh, writers, including George Lucas, Dave Filoni, and the others. And it really did help uh, flesh out uh, the prequel era, and it definitely added to uh, the gap in between Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Absolutely loved the seventh and final season of The Clone Wars. I have a few regrets. I wish it was a little bit longer. I would have preferred it if Disney would not have canceled the Clone Wars and would have allowed uh, the original planned seasons for the Clone Wars so it would have been fleshed out a little bit better because there were stories that were being worked on like a final showdown between Cad Bane and Bubba Fett. I guess that means that Cad Bane's still out there somewhere. You also had uh, like a Asajj Ventress redemption arc. And uh, that would have been cool to uh, see play out. And I think that was, uh, you know, done in a comic. Just like originally uh, Ahsoka's arc in the Clone Wars and the Mandalorian uh, Siege was done in a book a few years ago. And it's not exactly the same as the book when it comes to uh, the Clone Wars final four episodes, the Mandalorian arc. But, you know, there's obviously some similarities between the book as well as the final four episodes in Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Without going into spoiler territory, I will in just a bit. But yeah, it was uh, a great send-off, long-awaited for uh, The Clone Wars. And all seven seasons are great as you know one, I guess, uh, package from start to finish. And like I said, if you want me to go back and review the series as a whole, my overall thoughts and opinions more in depth, feel free and let me know below in the comment section. So I'm going to dive into spoilers real quick before we wrap up. Just my overall thoughts about uh, the season uh, with spoilers included for all of you that also watched uh, season seven of The Clone Wars. Let me know what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. How do you feel about the uh, series finale? Did did it satisfy you? Or do you wish that there would have been more to the series finale? I'll start off with uh, The Bad Batch. So once again, spoiler warning. We're going with spoilers forward to the end of the video. So Bad Batch, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And uh, I grew to really like The Bad Batch. Uh, they're quite different. I wonder if they're still out there. Or I wonder if they got the Order 66 call as well. I feel really sorry for any Jedi that was around The Bad Batch when that occurred. Because they probably didn't stand a chance. Then again, they were different, so maybe Order 66 didn't really kick off for them. We really don't know. I Honestly, if uh, their story has been concluded elsewhere, I would be interested to uh, find out about that. I guess I'll look into it on my own. But I really enjoyed it. Uh, there were obvious changes that were made from the original version of the Bad Batch, which was a very low res that was on YouTube forever, to the final product. 
and one of which was uh, on uh, their uh, ship, they had a very sexy World War II esque image of Padme, you know, with a blaster looking all hot. And apparently, in the original version, Anakin wasn't exactly happy about that. So they changed the scene, and they instead had a more you know, like intimate moment, a little private uh, back and forth between uh, Anakin and Padme. And, I mean, it, it was a good moment. I liked it. But they, they still could have had uh, Padme's image on their gunship. That would have been funny just to see Anakin's reaction. Like, hey. And then, you know, he can't exactly tell them that she's his wife. But overall, I did enjoy, uh, you know, the arc of the Bad Batch. Really good. Then we get into uh, Ahsoka's arc, you know, taking place sometime after she's left the Jedi Temple at the end of Season 5. And, you know, she runs into these sisters in Lower Coruscant. And she develops a, a, I guess, a friendship with them. And uh, they get in trouble with uh, some cartels. And it was okay. And it's a, I guess it's a good bridge for Ahsoka from uh, when we last see her leaving the Jedi Temple to the Mandalorian arc. But I feel like too much time was spent in this arc. And maybe they could have cut it down to two episodes and maybe gave one or two episodes additionally to the Mandalorian arc, or maybe another episode to the Bad Batch. Maybe give Bad Batch five episodes, Mandalorian arc five episodes, and just give uh, this uh, uh, sisters thing two episodes, because it was definitely the weaker of the three arcs. It was okay, but I really feel like it didn't really need to be like stretched out as long as it was. But it was great to see Ahsoka back and nice to see what her life has been like outside of the Jedi Temple and how she's had to adjust to it, as well as the perspective of uh, citizens of Coruscant, how they feel about the Jedi. They don't really seem to care about them too much, and uh, some of them have been affected negatively by uh, the Jedi, unfortunately, and of course the war itself. Uh, but by the end, you know, we find out that Maul is out there once again. We really don't know how he escapes from Darth Sidious after he's captured in, I think that was also season five, or was it season six, the Lost episodes? I think it was still season five, but I could be wrong about that. But I, that was something else that they could have done. They could have uh, dedicated two episodes to that, to Maul uh, being imprisoned by Sidious and exactly what transpires that allows him to escape. I think they briefly mentioned in the Mandalorian arc that his loyal Death Troopers, uh, Death Watch, uh, helped him escape Sidious's grasp, I think. I don't know exactly. Or else Sidious simply just let him go because, you know, he's kind of an agent of chaos. And even though he's no longer Sidious's apprentice, he no longer sees Maul as a potential rival because, well, he, he killed uh, Savage and uh, he captured Maul. So... I guess he doesn't see Maul as much of a threat to him, so he just lets Maul just do whatever he does, spreading the dark side out there within the criminal syndicates of the galaxy. But my favorite arc of all three was obviously the Siege of Mandalore. They did it very differently. They they opened with the actual like original like uh, font for uh, Lucasfilm Limited. That was cool. And then with the Star Wars theme playing in the background with the, the red version of the Clone Wars font... I don't know. I kind of wish they would have kept uh, the actual Clone Wars theme for the final four episodes because that just became the theme of this series. It was good though. I liked it. You know, they had uh, for this they did part one, two, three, four, and I guess what you could end up doing is seeing them like repackaged uh, as its own movie. Maybe they'll do that, similar to the very first uh, pilot which itself was uh, a movie. They actually put it in theaters. It wasn't very well received, but compare it to the sequel trilogy. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be getting to the sequel trilogy soon enough, probably starting next week with episode seven. But with the Mandalorian um, arc, it was good. The siege was awesome. Uh, the battle between Ahsoka, her uh, 501st troopers, the bond that is built up between her and Rex is fantastic as well as uh, you see uh, Maul in action. And the, the fight between her and Maul is epic. And, of course, Maul ends up losing to Ahsoka. I thought he was just going to escape then and there, but now he got captured. That was a surprise. I didn't expect him to be captured by Ahsoka and the clones. And uh, it was awesome. Plus, you also had uh, the lovely and talented Katie Sackhoff reprising her role as Bo-Katana. 
And that was pretty cool to see the little back and forth between her and Ahsoka. While I really enjoyed what was happening between Maul and Ahsoka, I do feel like during their fight, their duel, that Maul was giving a little too much information to Ahsoka regarding uh, Sidious' interest in Anakin. And it felt like it was just enough for, Aunt, for Ahsoka to put the pieces together regarding who Darth Vader is. Or maybe she knew all along and she simply is just in denial about it until she just has to come to accept it uh, later on in Star Wars Rebels. So I don't know. I do feel like that scene, like he said too much, maybe just a little bit. But of the four episodes, I unfortunately have to say that the weakest of the four, even though it was still good, was the series finale. I mean, it was great. You had Ahsoka and Rex, who had just had his inhibitor chip removed, uh, and along with the little droids, uh, fighting their way through the ship, trying to escape. Meanwhile, Maul is wreaking havoc aboard the Vander starship, and uh, he's destroyed the power of the hyperdrive, and it's about to crash into a moon, and uh, Maul escapes to a ship, and uh, Ahsoka and Rex eventually escape as well through a Y-Wing, and unfortunately, uh, Jesse and the rest of the clone troopers who have already, you know, been activated with Order 66 by Darth Sidious are, are killed, unfortunately. Even though Ahsoka and Rex don't want to kill them, in the end, you know, they all literally go down with the ship. And that was a very cool scene. It was also sad because we'd spend seven seasons with these clones and getting to know them, and props to the voice actor behind the clones. He did a great job, along with the uh, voice actress behind Ahsoka and all the rest of the Clone Wars cast. And it definitely was a very uh, depressing ending <laughs> to the Clone Wars saga. And I was kind of hoping for a little bit of hope at the end, because usually they do that even at the end of uh, Episode 3. There's a little bit of hope. Uh, even at the end of us, uh, see uh, Empire Strikes Back, there's a little bit of hope there. And uh, this is probably one of the most depressing endings of Star Wars because there really is no hope if you just you know watch it from that point to the very end of Clone Wars. I just wish they would have had a little bit more time with Ahsoka, Rex, and you know they ended up somewhere uh, joining the Rebellion or doing what they're going to do. And I don't know if it was really necessary at the end to uh, show them, you know, after the fact that they buried all the uh, clones, including Jesse. I mean, imagine how long that took them to bury all the clones. Probably took them a quick minute. And anyone that comes along, one thing I was thinking is like, you know, somebody had to bury these clones. So who the hell buried the clones? And uh, the fact that she just, you know, drops her lightsaber to the ground. She only dropped one. I think she lost the other one in the battle. And uh, I know that happens apparently in the book, but at the same time, I don't know, I probably would have held on to my lightsabers. Because, I mean, you just conveniently drop it on the ground. Okay. And then, you know, I guess some time passes by and it's now, the moon is now covered in snow. I guess it's a seasonal moon. And, you know, the stormtroopers have found it along with Darth Vader. And Darth Vader arrives and he walks up to the grave that's covered in snow and then he picks up Ahsoka's lightsaber. And then above you have that owl that's flying around that's uh, usually symbolic of one of the gods of Mobius or Morbius. I think it's Morbius. Yeah, uh, she's the what the goddess of light, I think. Uh, the daughter, yeah, the daughter. And uh, also symbolic of Ahsoka throughout uh, Rebels. And so I don't know if that scene was really necessary. I feel like that they simply could have spent the time to invest in Ahsoka and Rex uh, having a final moment together uh, somewhere on a different planet, maybe uh, along with Bell Organa or something else entirely. I don't know. I think that the ending should have had some sort of, I guess, uh, hopeful message, even though all this darkness is uh, you know, going down across the galaxy. Yeah, the Clone War is over, but at the same time, Order 66 has been carried out. Most of the Jedi have been destroyed, and uh, you know, Darth Sidious reigns as the Emperor, it would have been interesting to see uh, Soka and Rex reflect on uh, those friends that they lost, not just uh, Jesse, but the other clones, as well as the very real possibility from their point of view that, uh, you know, two Jedi that uh, Soka were very close to, actually several Jedi, because she was close to a lot of the Jedis, but the two big ones was Obi-Wan and Anakin. So she, I don't know if 
She actually, at this point, knows their fate. Obviously not. She has to assume that they're both dead. So it would have been interesting if they would have put a little bit more time uh, into their characters uh, when it came to that, which is why I think that they should have maybe had an extra episode uh, to the Mandalorian arc and maybe even an episode... I don't know. I mean, Bad Batch, I think, was fine in four episodes, but at the very least, maybe they should have given Mandalorian uh, five episodes. Well, the Mandalorian arc, not the Mandalorian TV series, which I also did a review of, by the way. But overall, despite my minor grievances with the series finale, I thought it was very fitting. It um, was uh, sad to watch, you know, because... Ahsoka and Rex are desperately trying to escape. They don't want to kill uh, the other clones, even though the other clones, like I mentioned, are trying to kill them. And uh, in the end, they just they have no choice. They have no choice but to get off the ship. And uh, unfortunately, all the other clones that were aboard the ship that went with Ahsoka and Rex to Mandalore to stop uh, Maul are now dead. And uh, Ahsoka and Rex, so you find out more about what happens to them in Star Wars Rebels, just in case you're curious. So, there we go. That's my overall thoughts, views, and opinions about Star Wars uh, Clone Wars, the seventh and final season. All the seasons, start to finish, now available on Disney+. Plus. And I'm curious to see what you thought about season seven of the Clone Wars. And would you like for me to do an overall review of the series Clone Wars your thoughts, your views, and opinions regarding Star Wars The Clone Wars, welcome below in the comment section. And of course, may the fourth be with you.